Hey everyone. At the very basics of statistics, you want to talk about what kind of data are you collecting and how are you collecting it. That's what this video is on. Data types and sampling methods. Okay. So in terms of data types, we often colloquially might refer to data as non-numerical data. and numerical data okay so these are not technical terms okay what we do want to say is qualitative data data that looks at a quality and quantitative data data that looks at a quantity Okay, why do we want to make this distinction? Well, consider something like a phone number, 555-4567, okay? Is it numerical? Well, it uses numbers, but it's not quantitative. It doesn't represent any quantity, okay? If one person's phone number has bigger numbers than another person's phone number, it doesn't mean that there's anything larger about it, okay? It doesn't represent a quantity, so it is not quantitative data. It's actually qualitative data, even though it uses numbers. So to avoid these kind of uh, tricky situations, we use the words qualitative and quantitative, okay? Now, there's different types of qualitative data. There's what's called nominal data, okay? Nominal data is qualitative data that has no ranking, it has no order. For example, phone number, okay? Or somebody's name, or what city someone was born in, okay? It's qualitative data, right? It doesn't refer to any quantity, and there's no category, there's no ranking system. Uh, between different cities or different phone numbers or different names, okay? So cities, names, and we mentioned phone numbers, favorite color, for example. Now, some qualitative data does have a ranking or an order to it, okay? So for example, mood, okay, can be... Uh, very sad, sad, neutral, happy, very happy. Okay, it's quantitative, uh, sorry, it's qualitative, right? There's no quantity there, but there is a certain ranking, okay? A uh, common question like, how happy are you with your service? Very satisfied. Uh, satisfied, neutral, not satisfied, very unsatisfied, okay? So this is called ordinal data, okay? So ordinal, okay? So we have ordinal data and we have nominal data. Ordinal data has an order or a ranking. Now when we look at quantitative data, There's actually two different ways we can separate quantitative data into different categories. Okay, one way is ratio versus interval. Let me just, uh, the pen got ahead of me there for a second. Ratio versus interval, okay? So ratio data, this is what you typically think of when you think of numerical data, when you think of quantitative data. Pen got ahead of me twice. Okay, so strictly ratio data is data where the zero is a meaningful quantitative value, and you can compare two different values in terms of how many times bigger one is than the other. For example, if you look at age, 
as numerical age. Okay, zero has a meaning. Okay, zero years have gone by since you've been born. And dividing two values has a meaning. Okay, if someone is 40 years old and someone else is 20 years old, well, 40 divided by 20 is 2, and that 2 has a meaning. The 40 year old has been around twice as long as the 20 year old. Okay, so that's ratio data. And that's what we usually think of when we think of numerical data. Okay, so things like height, things like weight, things like income, that's all ratio data. Interval data Honestly, you're going to see different definitions and different sources, different textbooks, different websites. Okay, how interval data is used, what's common in all these definitions, it is quantitative data that is not ratio data. Okay, it does not have a meaningful zero. The numbers cannot be divided by each other such that the ratio between them makes sense. Okay. So what's an example of that? Well, for example, degrees Celsius. Degrees Celsius, okay? Zero degrees does not mean there is no temperature. That's just the number used to represent the temperature at which water freezes or the temperature at which ice melts, okay? Uh, if it's 10 degrees, Celsius one day and five degrees Celsius the next day, well, 10 divided by five is two. But does it make sense to say it was twice as warm yesterday as it is today? It doesn't make sense. And if you're tempted to think, well, it does make sense, consider this, okay? If it was two degrees yesterday and negative one degree today, well, two divided by negative one is negative two. Was it negative two times as cold yesterday when it was plus two than it is today? Doesn't really make sense. So that's one example. Okay, another example is time. Okay, uh, consider zero hours, which is actually equivalent to 12 o'clock midnight. Does that mean there's no time? No, it doesn't mean there's no time. That's just the value we use to represent a particular position of the Earth rotating about its axis, okay? Now consider it's uh, six o'clock versus three o'clock. Is it twice as much time when it's six than when it's three? You might be tempted to say yes, but what day are we talking about? Is it six o'clock on a Wednesday versus three o'clock on a Saturday versus three o'clock on a Friday, right? Six o'clock can actually refer to many different moments in time, okay? Is it p.m. or a.m., right? So time uh, is another example. Now, of course, there are other ways of measuring time. For example, uh, how many seconds has it been since the race started? Okay, that's ratio. Zero has a meaningful value. Okay, so time since race started. Okay, zero has a meaningful value. And if someone took, you know, 15 seconds to finish the race and someone else took five seconds to finish the race. Okay, well, 15 divided by five is three. Did the first person take three times as long? Yes, they did, right? So measuring time in this way, it's ratio. Measuring time in the first way we talked about, that's interval. And of course, the most intuitive interval data is data that is an interval, okay? We talked about age as a ratio, but oftentimes you're asked for an age range, zero to five, 6 to 10, 11 to 13, 14 to 17, 18 to 22, 23 
to 28 and so on okay uh, you're not dealing with specific numbers here you're dealing with a numerical range is it quantitative yes there is quantitative meaning to these numbers but you're not dealing with specific numbers so you can't take a ratio and there is no zero that can have a specific meaning it's a range zero to five okay if someone is in the range zero to five and someone else is in the range six to ten does that mean that person two is twice as old as person one not at all so that's the most intuitive uh, interval data that there is okay now that's one way to look at quantitative data ratio versus interval there's another way you could look at quantitative data and usually this refers to ratio data though not always And that is data that is discrete versus continuous. So discrete data is where your data has to be specific numbers. Okay, for example, how many people are in the bar? Is it 200 people? Is it... 150 is it 97 and so on you can't have 205.3 people okay that point three that's not something that can happen the data has to be specific numbers between 201 and 202 there is no number that can fit between them for example that kind of data is discrete data it doesn't have to be whole numbers Okay, for example, how much pizza will you have? Okay, one slice, two slices, three slices, four slices, and so on. Assuming you're not allowed you know, to cut slices in half. Well, you can call it one slice, or you could also call it one eighth of a pizza, or two eighths, or three eighths, or four eighths, and so on. Okay, again, specific numbers, but you're not allowed to have anything between one eighth and two eighths okay that's still discrete data continuous data is where you're allowing any number within a range okay for example how much does someone weigh okay let's say they weigh 120 pounds or maybe they weigh 121 pounds now are they allowed to weigh 120.3 pounds yes they are how about 120.35 pounds? Yes, they are. Is there any value between 120 and 121? Uh, let me just uh, fix that there. Any value between 120 and 121 that they're not allowed to weigh? No, there is no such number, okay? any number within a range whatever that range is probably not 120 to 121 right bigger range than that but any number within the range is allowed that's called continuous data related to the word continue okay so these are the different data types these are the words we use to refer to different types of data and when we think of data in that way it helps us organize our thoughts better it helps us understand data much better as well